Let us all go to the book of Romans, chapter 8. So if you got your Bibles, I'm reading from the New King James Version, the same passage that we read two weeks ago, we saw about a life lived in the Holy Spirit. But that is not where the apostle tells us to stop. As we read it, we will know this morning. So let us all get our Bibles and go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, from verse 1 till verse 9. If we can stand up as we give honor and reverence to our God, as we read his word, because we believe in him, in his word, and we accept all that our God is doing for us. So from verse 1, Romans chapter 8, let us all join together and read. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are called in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak, through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. One of you all clap your hands and thank God for his word. Even as you sit down, we saw two weeks ago how you got to live your life in the spirit of God. For then you will live a life free of any punishment, any condemnation in this life or in, in eternity. You will be saved from hell and even on earth. You will not face any of the wrath of God, any of the curse of God. For you will operate under the law of the Holy Spirit, free from the law of sin and death. For you're redeemed from the curse that comes for those who do not keep the law of God that was revealed to Moses and it was written for all the world to see and know. This morning, we're going to move from living a life, seeing that to having the mind a mind focused on the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. In Romans chapter 12 verse 2 it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that it may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you got to have your minds renewed. Why don't you tap someone sitting next to you and say, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So God is not ignoring the mind and we need the Holy Spirit to transform our mind also. Because... We live in a world where we are trained to think in particular ways right from a small age. Every schooling and education is something that trains our mind and sets it in a pattern of thoughts so that we will be able to do things which are expected of us so that as we grow up, everyone will be able to earn so they will have the mind that will help them do particular jobs and works in different fields but it is not just for this world that the mind has to be used and God is not ignoring the mind the fallen corrupted mind when sin entered the world it corrupted the body and the mind and it suppressed and almost killed the spirit of a person that a person became almost dead to God that is why when you accept Jesus Christ you have to be 
almost born again to God like a child which was not exist till that point in the spirit. So here we've got to not just focus on the spirit though we are looking at the Bible and seeing how we are a spirit and how we need to relate to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants and God wants and God the Father wants our mind to be renewed. Titus chapter 3 verse 3 it says for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That's how our mind is. That is a thought that is present in the world. Foolishness in the eyes of God because we focus only on this temporal world which will pass away and we are disobedient to God and there is a rebellion and a resistance that is promoted in the world and people are very proud of how they disobey and how they rebel but all that will not help man because when we disobey God we put ourselves on the path towards death and hell and we were deceived because the thinking of the world is influenced by the devil and all the fallen angels your thought that is there in your mind can either come from God or it will come from the devil. You might have received it from someone else but every thinking, every thought will either come from God or it will come from the devil and when you do not analyze what is there in your mind you'll end up thinking like the people of the world which is the thinking that the devil has brought about so that he can make people disobedient and be deceived serving various lusts and pleasures that is what is promoted in the media even in news channels even in children's channels just 10 minutes or so after the program continues you definitely will be bombarded with advertisements and people coming up with various thoughts and ideas and telling about your life that your life is not complete if you do not do that if you do not have this if you do not expect this so much so that man is made to become selfish and he is forced to live contrary to what is there in the word of God serving various lusts and living in malice envy being hateful and hating one another that's how you see everything getting broken down commitment is rare faithfulness is rare loyalty is rare the devil attacks the family for that is like the foundation for any society for any city for any nation and the entire world and when children grow up in broken homes and when our home is broken then the devil knows that that will destroy the very next generation then they grow up in a broken home for them to have a mind which is tuned to loyalty they'll have to fight and they will have to make a strong choice otherwise the very basic and the first thought that they will have is this happened in my family this happened in to my parents this is what is happening in the world so this is all right this is what the world is doing so I will do it but we've got to come and allow the Holy Spirit to renew our mind to think like how God thinks to think like how Jesus Christ thinks that is why you cannot watch certain things and allow certain things to enter it might seem like a cut off but sometimes you got to cut down all the negative influences you cannot be constantly allowing yourself to be bombarded by the thoughts and the thinking and the words of people in the world who are completely against the kingdom of God against the word of God have no moral law who live a life which is completely disobedient to God and they will promote what they think and if you're not careful those thoughts that mindset will be adopted by you they are very cunning and devious they plant things in your mind they go to the subconscious they may not directly say it but even as they present an image of someone speaking something in the background they present images logos and pictures though it might not be the focus it will still get planted in your mind this is something that is done in a very 
planned fashion and manner by the advertisers, by people of the world, by media, so that the thinking and the thoughts of men who see it and people who see it will be influenced by that. So you've got to know how your thoughts is, you've got to analyze yourself and you've got to be transformed by your mind being renewed. Because we grew up in a world, especially those who come from a non-Christian background, who have not read the Bible, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you worship God and you live a spiritual life, it is not just certain spiritual things that you can do by praying and reading the Bible and coming to church, all that is good. But you've got to focus on your mind and you've got to transform it. Just as we are seeing how our spirit has to be strengthened, you've got to understand that we are a spirit and God is a spirit and how we can communicate with Him. But it is through the same Holy Spirit that our minds can be renewed. It cannot be done by ourselves with physical or mental strength. Certain mental strongholds can be broken only through the power of the Spirit of God. Otherwise, they will go to certain psychiatrists. They can try to talk, but beyond a point, they will have to give you certain medication to suppress certain hormones and control or maybe even put the person in a different state of mind, in a different state of body where they cannot even function normally. There have even been instances when they give electric shocks and do all kinds of things. Why? So that the mind can be shaped in a particular fashion and manner. But when you come to the Holy Spirit, to God, He will help you to have the right thoughts, the right thinking, the right attitude, the right mindset with total complete ease. That is a breakthrough that He gives when He prays and worship and you attend service and there is prayer. He will renew your mind without any difficulty at all and your mind needs to be renewed so that there is no deviousness, that there is no corruption, there is no crookedness. In Titus chapter 3 verse 4 onwards it says, but when the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So a washing that takes place every time you come to the presence of God, you are washed by the presence of God. The presence of God fills the temple. His glory fills the temple. It is like you getting cleansed and washed. You are having a spiritual bath. So the filth and the dirt of the world is renewed. Through the washing of regeneration, he regenerates that which was crushed by the devil. The heart and the mind which wants to be faithful, the people of the world will break it. They want to remove it. They want to kill it. They don't want you to be committed. They don't want you to live a moral life. They want to promote all kinds of evil because only then they can also continue to do that. And when they know that they cannot reach some groups of people and they are limited then they will go even to the schools and they want to affect the children that is what is happening in western nations where they're telling even the parents you cannot tell the child what to do we will tell your child what the child needs to do and they tell the children don't tell anything you don't need any permission from your parents if they do anything to you come and tell us so things are gone to that extent because they know that they cannot by themselves do certain things and be accepted so they want to focus on the next generation they want to create such a wicked generation and a people who are completely corrupted a generation which does not know what is right and what is wrong but when you come to the house of God when you are filled with the spirit of God each and every day as you pray and this anointing and the presence of God touches you wherever you might be you are washed and regenerated and renewed. Why don't you all say that two words, regenerated and renewed. That which the world tries to kill and the people of the world kill, God will bring it back to life. So from this passage that we saw in the Romans chapter 8 verse 6 onwards, we can see that the Holy Spirit focused mind is life. That is the first thing. Because to be carnally minded is death. 
we allow the carnal sinful fallen nature to affect our thinking because that's what Adam and Eve did they wanted to know what was evil God told them do not eat of this fruit but they wanted to know what was evil man likes to know what is evil that is a fallen nature and that runs through every human being till they fight it through the power of the Holy Spirit and when we allow our mind to continue in that corrupted fashion it will lead to death but to be spiritually minded is life the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 onwards as I read it you can also follow along Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 it says this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness but you have not so learned Christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that he put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind you can see here all the things that are there in the world very clearly written you can note it down and go home and read it again the mind is where you have thoughts purposes you set it up you determine what are the purposes in your life that is the first thing that you do the second is you exercise the mind you train it in a particular way and you entertain a particular sentiment or an opinion about various things and you get disposed mentally in a particular fashion and manner that is why people who know little truth when they're brought and they're told that they need to accept the whole truth and they are not in the full truth they will not accept it those who grow up in an environment in a spiritual or religious environment where they have the Bible a form of godliness but they don't have the teaching or the doctrine of being born again or the teaching of the doctrine of baptism in water or baptism in the Holy Spirit when you share this is what is there in the Bible it takes a long time for certain people to even accept it even years and some will reject it because they grew up in it they exercised their mind in a particular way they entertained and had a sentiment and opinion that that is right that that is good and they're mentally disposed in a particular fashion the third thing is they think earnestly in a certain direction what would be the situation some people are optimistic some people are pessimistic some people are always thinking in a particular fashion and manner wherever you take them what will be the situation they always heading in a particular direction you got to check all this that's what I'm telling you the fourth thing the mind can do is intensively interest itself or concern itself with certain things focusing on certain things no matter what happens in the world they always focus on certain things that is what they enjoy and the fifth thing they do is they set their affection the mind tells oh this is good this is what I will love this is what I will like this is what I will have affection for they've determined it and so that becomes a stronghold of the mind it means that they've got such a strong thought it is like a fortress that no one can break through no one can make them think in any other way and they don't even know what is there in the word of God things concerning family things concerning concerning marriage between husband and wife between parents and children the laws of God all those things we've got to do it according to the word of God not based on how we feel not based on what people think 
not based on what we think is right. You've got to approach with an open mind. That is the most difficult thing for many people to accept and know what the truth is. They like to tell, this is what I will do, this is what I will think like. But when God is allowed, He will set you on the right path. Otherwise, you will head towards destruction as we saw here. They are not going to end having life, but a carnal mind is death. You've got to know what the moral laws and how you've got to accept it. And the sixth thing that a mind does, it cares for and regards certain things with great esteem. It has concern for certain things. Only the people who are around them will say, why do you care for this? Why do you regard this so high? But only those who are planted and rooted in the word of God will know what a person should care for, what a person should regard as good, what should be regarded as evil. So all these happen in the mind. The seventh thing is they will savor and enjoy. The mind really enjoys going through certain things, doing certain things, making others experience certain things. It is not for the body, it is for the pleasure of the mind. Because certain hormones are released when they see something, when they do something, that they become serial practices of certain things. But it should be a serial practicer of the good. Oh yes, you got to be someone who enjoys reading the word of God, someone who enjoys a revelation from God and you got to seek it, someone who enjoys the presence of God, someone who enjoys prayer. Your mind should think in such a way, in a, such a fashion that you will have life because of it. Amen. So, Holy Spirit focused mind is a mind that will lead to life. It means that your mind is controlled or allowed to be managed by the Spirit of God. Will you allow that to happen in your life? Will you allow your mind to be trained by the Spirit of God? A mind that is not trained by the world, by the people of the world, not ruled by the world. Out of peer pressure, what others think, friends think, or co-workers, or classmates think, what they're promoting in the media, in the programs, in the advertisements. But you've got to allow the Spirit of God to control and rule your mind. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you you got to focus your mind on the spirit. you got to take every thought and bring it to the obedience of Christ Jesus. You've got to sit down in the presence of God and ask God, is this attitude right? Is this thinking right? Show me. Oh God, then you will have a mind which will lead you to life. The second thing, the Holy Spirit focused mind will give you is peace. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 6 that we saw. Jesus himself says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you not as the world gives do I give you. He's contrasting it with the world. The peace that Jesus gives, nothing in the world can give. That's why he's saying, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Romans 15, 13 says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that he may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Philippians 4, 6 onwards, it says, be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and Guard your mind through Christ Jesus. The world and the thinking of the world, the bad news that is going around in the world will make you anxious. It will remove all peace. It will keep you in that disturbed state where you get agitated and you can even go to a tipping point of a mental breakdown. That is not the plan of God. That is not something that is led by the Spirit of God. You've got to have a mind. The mind that was there in Christ. That is strong and stable. That nothing in this world. No one in this world. 
should be able to break through because your mind is strengthened by the spirit of god your thoughts are given by the spirit of god even as they're coming and they're bombarding you constantly the holy spirit from deep within the holy spirit who is leading you he will keep telling you even as the enemy is talking the spirit of god will be talking contrary to what negative things that they are saying the holy spirit will keep building you up positively even simultaneously at the same time as the devil or people are trying to break you down or coming and saying things and trying to crush you the same time the holy spirit will give you hope he will give you strength he will encourage you he will build you up he will say no this is not right what they're saying is not right you have life in christ you have a good life you have a good future oh there is hope in jesus things will turn around oh yes god is building your life hold on do not give up do not yield do not respond just stand still keep silent do not let the things get out of hand for you to be in that portion of pressure and not yield to that pressure you need the holy spirit that when the enemy decides now i'm going to corner you and i'm put you in that spot and now i'm going to bombard you and let's see how strong your mind is make you say things that should not be said make you do things that should not be done all that starts in the mind even as someone is talking the enemy will talk on the other side even as the holy spirit is talking he will say you react you tell them they told this statement you say this statement back to them you crush them even further they want to hurt you with one word you hurt them with two words these are the words and it will keep coming but you've got to listen to the holy spirit at that time oh yes because we will not know how to respond at that time because we don't have power over the evil spirits but with the power of the holy spirit we will be able to overcome even the devil that's what he did with jesus if you are the son of god if you are the son of god if you are the son of god do this do that but since he was baptized with the holy spirit and he listened to the holy spirit the holy spirit reminded him of the verses from god what you're saying devil is not true but it is written in the word that is a thought that i'll accept but it is written in the word that is a word that i will speak but it is written in the word that is what i will do not what you tell me devil you got to have a mind that is renewed a mind that is focused on the holy spirit will give you peace no matter what jesus and the 12 apostles got into the boat and the storm came but jesus was sleeping because his mind he knew that he's going to go to the other side this is not how his end is going to be he knew that he's going to die on the cross on a particular day in the particular hour in a particular spot and this was not it that is why he was able to go sleep though the wind was roaring and the waves were beating the water was getting into the boat but he was still able to sleep but the others they were influenced by all these sounds by all these thoughts by thinking of negativity that made them get panicked get anxious let your mind be set on the spirit of god focused on the holy spirit you got to allow your mind to be influenced by the holy spirit want to tap someone and say let the holy spirit lead your mind let the holy spirit fashion your mind the third thing we can see is roman chapter 8 verse 7 it says the holy spirit focus mind is friendly to god for the carnal mind is enmity against god when we allow the thinking of the world to enter us and a carnal sinful nature is there it is something that is against god it becomes an enemy to god god thinks in a particular fashion he wants certain things to be done but when the thinking of the world and evil spirits and their thoughts are allowed to work in us then we will constantly be opposing god we become an enemy to god but when we allow the holy spirit and his thoughts 
to be what runs in our minds and we'll become friendly to God. You'll walk with Him. You'll go in the same direction. You will do what He says. You will believe in Him. You will trust in Him. For those who come to God must believe that He is. How many Christians struggle with even accepting that there is a God? Oh yes, when a little difficult thing comes or when what they expect does not happen, immediately their faith gets shaken. They wonder where is God? They wonder why what they expected is not happening. It is because they are not influenced by the Holy Spirit, they are influenced by the thinking of the world and the evil spirits which come, which want to steal the faith. That's what it says here. The carnal mind is enmity against God. And that is why they might be Christians carrying the Bible, born in a Christian family, but they'll make statements against God. They'll say things against God, things about God. They're not been in the presence of the Spirit of God and have not got regenerated and renewed. When you're in this world, you've got to be constantly regenerated and renewed. Every day, as you connect with God in your homes, and also whenever there is a service, whether Friday or Sunday or Sunday to Sunday or for 21 days or 40 days, or if God says you've got to do it till, till I come, if you want to survive and make it to heaven, then you've got to do that. The Bible says they forsook all and followed him. They gave up their careers, their jobs, their businesses just to be with Jesus. And three and a half years they were with him the entire time. Why? They wanted that life. They wanted that eternity. That's why so many of them come to Jesus and say, Lord, Master, tell how I can have eternal life. That was the focus of many of the Jews. But what is the focus of many of the Christians? Bless me now. Right now I want blessing, I want this, I want that and that's all. Jesus says certain things. Many people who leave the church. But a mind that is focused on the Holy Spirit will be friendly to God. It will not say anything against God. It will not even think anything against God. No one might know what thoughts are running in your head. But if you feel that your thoughts are contrary, they're accusing God, they're criticizing God, saying negative things about the things of God, about the people of God, about the church of Jesus Christ, about anybody of the servants of God, or any of the brothers and sisters in the family of God, then all that is not a mind that has allowed the Holy Spirit to work, a mind that is not focused on the Holy Spirit, a mind that was infected with a negative and corrupted thinking of the world. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. There is a spirit in the world which wants to shape your mind in a particular way. You got to know that, realize that. It wants to come and grab your mind and it wants to shape your mind in a particular way because it knows that after it shapes your mind in that negative, crooked, or evil fashion, it can even leave you all through your life till it is regenerated and renewed by the Holy Spirit. You will continue to do that evil again and again. It becomes a habit, it becomes an addiction, they become a serial offender because that's what their mind is trained to do. You got to not allow the spirit of the world. Read once again, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but as the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Only someone who has that spiritual discernment. Those who are not in full-time ministry, who have that spirit of discernment, the gift of discernment, but those who are there, who are in full-time ministry, definitely will have their spirit tuned by God. The unction and the leading of God, giving clarity, giving truth, 
as soon as a word is said as soon as a sentence is made as soon as there is a turn that is taken by the world oh yes the whole world suddenly takes a turn and they have concern for this they publish it all over it comes in the news as headlines and saying this is what we're going to do this is how we're going to react the situation in this country is going to make us all react in this way immediately only those who have the spiritual discernment from god alone this is not from god or is this from god is this right what should i do because everything that the world does you got to either accept it or reject it if you do not know what is right what is a perfect thing for you to do at that point you will end up deviating a little bit and then find your way to death and hell eventually but even a little deviation should be stopped do not let the world of the spirit the evil spirit of the world corrupt and confuse you be friendly to god because when you accept their statements accept their logic accept their philosophy accept the news and then you start supporting it then you start liking it then you start encouraging it you got tell people all about it if it is not from god then you become an enemy to god because god is going in a particular direction but you accepted what the devil has deviously with all deception brought that thinking into the world to make the world go away from god towards death hell and grave the fourth thing that we can see romans chapter 8 verse 7 is that the holy spirit focused mind is subject to the law of god if your mind is not focused on the holy spirit your mind will not be subject it says because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god nor indeed can be it cannot be the bible has said a carnal mind thinking in the flesh in a fallen nature you cannot be friends with god you cannot keep the law of god as we saw in first corinthians chapter 2 the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god they are foolishness to him they say what is this in this day and age are you going to be so serious about this in this day and age are you going to not do this everyone's doing it it is all right come on what's wrong with you you also got to do it everyone's doing it you might face ridicule rejection sometimes you might be all alone by yourself if you want to i love the holy spirit to be the one who's in control of your mind your thoughts the fifth thing roman chapter 8 was 8 says so then those who are in the flesh cannot please god the holy spirit focused mind will not just be friendly with god will not just be subject to the law keeping the law automatically when you allow the holy spirit to shape your mind and all your thoughts are in line with the word of god you are keeping the law and the fifth thing is you will start pleasing god if your thinking and your thoughts are right but if you are in the flesh allowing the body to tell what you need to do then your thinking will be contrary you will not be pleasing god you will be pleasing yourself and us body does not want to go to god it does not want to go to heaven it wants to go the way of the world it is something that focuses on the temporal things all around right now this is what i want i need to have this right now i don't care what the consequences are what will be the effect of what i do right now that's what the body says that's what the mind will say that's a fallen nature that's why god said do not eat of that but man would not accept that galatians chapter 1 verse 10 says for do i now persuade men or god or do i speak to please men do i seek to please men for if i still please men i would not be a bond servant of christ 
that's where the world is heading pleasing men when the majority says that you got to join them people will come and speak to you and say you've got to join along you've got to do this you got to please the relatives you got to please the friends you got to please the neighbors you got to please the co-workers you got to do what they're all doing pleasing man becomes more important than anything else keeping face with people trying to do certain things to get respect and recognition and honor from people but a holy spirit focused mind will be focused on pleasing god what did you all say please god you're not called to please men because men and their thoughts are influenced by the evil spirit that is there in the world colossians chapter 1 verse 10 it says that you may walk worthy of the lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1 it says finally brethren we urge and exhort in the lord jesus that you should abound more and more just as you received from us how we ought to walk to please god First Thessalonians 2:4 says but as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men but God who tests our hearts sometimes God allows certain things to take place only then the truth will be revealed Jesus himself was tested by the devil to see what his thoughts would be what his words would be how he would react under that pressure when he hears this when the devil puts him in that spot that's why it says here but we as so we speak entrusted with this gospel in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 it says not as pleasing men but pleasing god who tests our hearts at least after saying something that is evil something that is against god unfriendly to god displeasing to god we should realize oh no what did i just say you got to go back and seek forgiveness that is if the holy spirit is there in you and he's convicting you immediately saying what did you just say he will convict you what did you just do do you think that is right you got to immediately go to that place where just between you and god and you got to rectify your thinking you got to regain strength you got to repent and you got to get forgiveness cleanse with the blood of jesus and then set the thinking right thinking the way of christ might be very difficult when you follow the lord but that's what you've got to do see what jesus expects of us in matthew chapter 8 was 21 it says one of his disciples said to him lord let me go and bury my father and what did jesus say to him follow me and let the dead bury their own dead sometimes to follow god you will be highly displeasing to people they will consider it completely disrespectful you will lose certain people oh yes to be able to follow the lord sometimes you have to give up on all those friends and all those people they might not understand at all luke chapter 9 verse 57 onwards it says it happened now as he journeyed on the road that someone said to him lord i will follow you wherever you go and jesus said to him foxes have holes birds of the air have nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head he's not encouraging him saying come come i'll give you this because that's what he expected he came to jesus and said, lord i will follow you wherever you may go and then he was levating okay what will jesus say he'll say oh i'll give you houses i'll give you this i'll give you that i'll make you the leader i'll make you an apostle i'll give you this title and this designation jesus himself said i foxes have holes and birds have nests but i don't have any place i don't have anything myself you follow me i will promise nothing to you will you still follow if i'm going to say you're going to get nothing another man came and said And to him jesus said follow me but he said lord let me first go and bury 
my father luke chapter 9 verse 59 and jesus said to him let the dead bury their own dead but you go and preach the kingdom of god next was luke 9 61 it says another said lord i will follow you but let me first go and bid farewell to those who are at my house and jesus said to him no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god god expects such dedication he's not wanting us to go back and forth and up and down and no one knows where we are whether we are in the world or what state we'll be in in a particular day the sixth thing we can see in romans chapter 8 verse 9 is the holy spirit focused mind shows you are in the spirit but you're not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you if he's still dwelling in you your mind will be focused on the holy spirit but if your mind is unfriendly to god displeasing to god how can the holy spirit be there samson when he went on again and again giving up all his commitment his dedication finally saying okay cut the seven locks of hair that has never been cut and she cut it and the spirit of god had left him he thought like previously he can just get up and break those bonds but he could not because the holy spirit could not be with him because he entertained the thought and had a mind which said this is what i want this is what i like this is what i will do but you've got to be pleasing to god have a mind focused if your mind is not focused on the holy spirit if it is set on other things of the world following other things suddenly taking off in one direction going doing something in the flesh you've got to stop no definitely the holy spirit is not going to be able to be with you and in you if you continue in that direction for a long time the seventh thing i want to see here is romans chapter 8 verse 9 it says a holy spirit focused mind shows you belong to god when the holy spirit is there when you're thinking is right he will continue to be there when you focused on him he will continue to be there because you honor him and you receive from him you allow him to speak you know that he is god and that you are following him that's why it says now if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he is not his and when he lost the holy spirit how can you say he belong to god because god has poured out the spirit on all flesh there's no one who can say i do not have the holy spirit but i'm still on my way to heaven if the holy spirit is not there that is the check the bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 you are sealed with the holy spirit of promise you are sealed it says in second corinthians chapter 1 verse 22 who has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee that's why the holy spirit was given second corinthians 1 21 says that given us as a the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee that you belong to christ if you have no interest of the things of god and praise and worship and prayer and reading the word of god then you got to sit down and say god what is happening where are you why am i not interested my body and my mind is focused on other things then god will definitely set you on the right path you will call the spirit of god then you find that secret place that's what you're searching for you're sitting down and saying i will not get up from here i will not leave i will run to the presence of god and i will have the spirit of god dwelling inside of me then my mind and my body and my life will be right why don't we all stand up by this time because jesus is not left us as orphans he said i will come to you if the holy spirit is there galatians chapter 4 verse 6 says god has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying out above father that connection you will have the assurance that i truly am a child of god that god in heaven is my father you will never think oh no one is there nothing is there for me i'm all alone that's what the world and the people of the world want to tell you your life is worthless take it no one is there but i want to tell you if god is there you wouldn't need anyone else or anything else you can be locked inside a prison beaten and bleeding and tied but you'll still pray and praise and worship god because when he is there you are never alone 
let the guarantee and the seal of the holy spirit always be there they'll strengthen your mind they'll keep your mind in the right fashion with the right attitude the right mindset if that's the mind that you want a mind that is focused on the holy spirit a mind that is controlled by the holy spirit a mind that is renewed and regenerated by the holy spirit oh close your eyes and lift up your hands and say oh lord let my mind be focused on you shaped by you regenerated and renewed by your spirit of the living god i yield my mind i want to listen to what you say i want my thoughts to be the thoughts that are pleasing to god i want my thoughts and my thinking to be friendly to god oh heavenly father even this morning even as each and every one of dedicated themselves pray that you lead them and guide them that their mind and their thinking their attitude their mindset their thoughts oh all that they enjoy in their mind all oh, it all be according to you oh lord according to your word according to your holy spirit of god we ask this all your wonderful and mighty name jesus name we ask and pray amen everybody clap your hands and bless god and thank him and praise him and give him all glory honor and power and praise god bless you